Let's get up and running with an Arduino remote. I picked up this remote for just a few dollars from the local electronics store. It didn't come with a manual. Unfortunately, there's no manual. So we're going to have to figure out how to use it ourselves. In the packet, we've got the remote, an IR receiver, an IR transmitter, just in case we don't want to use the remote, and a few headers. The sensor itself has clear markings. A minus for negative, that's usually your black wire, a plus for positive, that's your red wire, and an S for signal. You can use any color you like for that one. I usually go with yellow. Now it's hooked up to our Pico and we're going to need some code. All right, here's our code and just briefly from the top down. First, we include a library. Basically, that's another sketch someone else has written to help us out. We could program this sensor ourselves line by line, but that would take a lot of time. Adding a library that already includes the necessary code makes the whole process super easy. Now that it's added, we want the received data to display in the console. The console is just a terminal window that lets our Pico show what codes are being received. It'll all make sense in a minute. Next, we initialize the receiver so our Pico is ready to get data. Further down, there's our loop. This part of the program runs continuously while the Pico is powered up. We're asking the sketch to gather data from the IR receiver and display the protocol, address, command, and raw data. What each of these means isn't super important right now. We just want to make sure we're getting something in. Let's upload our sketch and see what happens. With the console open, when we press a button, we can see a bunch of data come through. The one we're most interested in is the command. We'll use this later to make stuff happen. What we need to do now is map the command for each button. I'll go away and do that now. All right, here's all the button mapping. Now that we've got these details, we can ask the Arduino to watch for these signals and perform an action. Here's our new sketch. It looks pretty similar, but there are a few differences. We define a pin and the number of pixels for an LED ring. We'll turn these LEDs on and off using a button from the remote. Further down, we define the command we want to watch for. In our loop section, we monitor the incoming commands. If it matches the one we declared earlier, we turn on the LEDs. If the lights are already on, we turn them off. So the button acts like a switch. Because it is in a loop, it just keeps checking. Let's see what happens. And success. Pressing the OK button turns on our LEDs. Obviously, this could be used for anything, relays, motors, you name it. We've got 17 other buttons, so let's mix it up a bit. For each number button on the remote, we'll light that many pixels and use the up and down arrows to change the color. Let's have a look. Works perfectly. I'm going to use this remote to control the volume on my motorized volume knob so I can adjust the volume on my PC from across the room. Make sure you check that video out. If you've made it this far, you should totally subscribe. I've got heaps of other videos you'll love. And again, all the sketches are free on my Patreon. Thanks for watching.